January 3rd, 2026. The handcuffs click shut. The package is secured. Now begins the deadliest phase of the mission, the exfiltration. How do you escort a slow-moving helicopter through 80 miles of S-300 kill zones? You don't just fly, you build a steel corridor. Here is the tactic. You create a moving fortress that dominates every layer of physics. At 50,000 feet, F-22 Raptors create an invisible ceiling, freezing the enemy air force on their runways. At 20,000 feet, B-1B Lancers execute kinetic sanitization erasing ground threats before they can block the path. And at treetop level, we weaponize acoustic deception to make a gunship sound like a harmless transport. This is not a rescue flight. This is a synchronized machine. Over 150 aircraft, one nuclear carrier, all focused on a single 30-minute window. This isn't just military tactics. This is the ultimate demonstration of American engineering. If you agree, type USA in the comments right now. Welcome to Navy Decoded. We don't just report the victory. We reverse engineer the machine that built it. By the end of this briefing, you will never look at a Black Hawk helicopter the same way again. Let's run the numbers. We need to correct a definition. The media talks about air superiority. They are wrong. That is Cold War thinking that is a struggle for control. This operation was about air dominance. The difference isn't tactical, it is mathematical. Superiority means you fight to win. Dominance means the enemy cannot even solve the equation to fight back. They cannot calculate a probability of survival that justifies leaving the ground. Meet the anomaly that solves this equation, the F-22 Raptor. Why is it the undisputed ruler of the night? Physics dictates a trade-off. You can be stealthy or you can be agile. You cannot be both. The F-22 is a paradox. It is both. Let's look at the engineering. Most fighters turn using aerodynamic drag on their wings. The Raptor uses thrust vectoring. The nozzles on its twin Pratt and Whitney F-119 engines don't just push forward. They pivot, plus or minus 20 degrees, up and down. This allows the aircraft to execute post-stall maneuvers. It can point its nose at a target while flying in a completely different vector. It doesn't just fly, it manipulates gravity. Then there is the firepower. Look at the wings, they are clean. No missiles, no pylons. External weapons create drag. They increase the radar cross-section. The Raptor hides its claws. Six AI M120D AMRAMs and two sidewinders are buried inside internal weapons bays. This eliminates the parasitic drag penalty. It allows the jet to super cruise, flying at Mach 1.8 without using afterburners. While the enemy is burning fuel to keep up, the Raptor is coasting at supersonic speed with energy to spare. When the kill sequence begins, the bay doors snap open in less than a second, 50,000 feet above the Venezuelan coastline. The pilot isn't hunting aircraft, he is hunting intent. Using the AN-APG-77 radar in LPY mode, the Raptor paints a 3D picture of the airfield below. It sees every Su-30 in its shelter, every heat signature. Here is the physics of fear. The moment a Venezuelan pilot starts an engine, the sensors detect the thermal bloom. Before the wheels leave the concrete, before the landing gear retracts, an AIMY-120D is, is already traveling at Mach 4. The target is erased from the equation without ever seeing a radar return. This isn't a dogfight. This is a deletion. The enemy runs the numbers. Launch equals neutralization. Stay parked equals survival. The result is zero. So they do not launch. They sit in hardened shelters. Engines cold. Do the math with me. One aircraft, costing $150 million, generates strategic paralysis worth billions by doing absolutely nothing visible. That is, operational overmatch. But the Raptor isn't working alone. While it holds the ceiling, the EA-18G Growler rewrites the electromagnetic spectrum. When an S-300 battery activates its radar, 
the growler floods the frequency with structured noise. The commander faces a binary choice. Turn off and go blind. Or transmit and guide an anti-radiation missile to his own antenna. Either way, the system is neutralized. The network isn't destroyed. It is suffocated by data. And beneath this invisible ceiling, the sledgehammer arrives from Texas. If the F-22 Raptor is a scalpel, the B-1B Lancer is a physics lesson in brute force. Why bring a strategic nuclear bomber to a helicopter escort mission? Two words, variable geometry. Look at the wings. This is not cosmetic design. This is aerodynamic engineering solving contradictory requirements in real time. When the B-1B needs to loiter, orbiting like a patient vulture, the wings extend to 15 degrees. This creates maximum lift. It allows a 480,000 pound aircraft to cruise efficiently for hours. Minimum burn, maximum endurance. But when the helicopter lifts off, the physics change. The wing sweep actuators engage. The wings rotate aft to 67.5 degrees. Instantly, the profile transforms. Parasitic drag drops to its absolute minimum. The cross-section shrinks. Four General Electric turbofans kick into afterburner. Combined output, 120,000 pounds of raw thrust. The bomber accelerates through Mach 1. It stops being a bomber. It becomes a supersonic pathfinder. Do the math with me. 75,000 pounds of ordnance, GBU-31 JDAMs. But accuracy matters more than tonnage. Mounted under the intake is the Sniper XR, targeting pod. It doesn't just see the ground, it reads the thermal history of the battlefield. From 25,000 feet, the weapons officer can see the heat bloom of a truck engine block that was turned on two minutes ago. He knows who is waiting. The B-1B does not engage the enemy. It erases the grid square the enemy is standing on. He designates the coordinates. The doors open. GPS guidance. 10 meter accuracy. This is kinetic sanitization. It creates a vacuum of destruction where pursuit becomes physically impossible. On Venezuelan radar, this isn't stealth. It is intimidation. And on the ground, the terror is acoustic. Because the B-1B is flying faster than sound, the enemy sees it pass before they hear it. First, the silence. Then the flash of the afterburners. And finally, the sonic boom a physical wall of air pressure that shatters glass and ruptures eardrums. It broadcasts one message. We are here, we are heavy, and we are faster than sound. The enemy isn't fighting a helicopter. They are fighting the weight of American strategic air power delivered at Mach 1.25. Run the numbers. Operational cost for this flight, $4 million. Intelligence value of the target, over $1 billion. We traded jet fuel for the secrets of an entire regime. That is not wasteful spending. That is leverage. But while the B-1B kicks down the front door, the brilliant deception is happening right above the treetops. The most elegant variable in this equation wasn't at 50,000 feet. It was at 50 feet. Here is the engineering question. Why did the 160th Special Operations Aviation Regiment reject the AH-64 Apache for this specific mission? The answer lies in acoustic physics. The Apache is a flying tank, but it fails one specific metric, audio profile. Its rotor slap creates a distinct, aggressive frequency. It screams, attack. It broadcasts intent. Every soldier on the ground knows that sound. It triggers an immediate defensive calculation. So the 160th SOAR engineered a deception. Enter the MH-60M DAP, the Direct Action Penetrator. Externally, the geometry is identical to a standard UH-60 Blackhawk. Same airframe, same general electric engines, same rotor pitch. To the human ear, the acoustic wave signal logistics, medical evac, harmless. The enemy brain classifies the sound as a non-threat. That classification is the fatal error, because the internal geometry has been radically altered. 
the troop compartment is deleted. No seats. No benches. Replaced by an M230 30mm chain gun adapted directly from the Apache. Twin Dillon Arrow miniguns. Hellfire missiles. It is a heavy gunship wrapped in the skin of a transport. The DAP establishes a hover orbit. Using infrared sensors, it acquires thermal signatures through the windows. It engages with the 30mm cannon firing M789 HEP rounds. These are not standard bullets. They use a shaped charge liner to inject a jet of molten metal through walls. The objective is surgical sanitization. It neutralizes the threat inside the room without compromising the building's structural integrity. The enemy faces a cognitive paradox. Their ears hear the slow rhythm of a bus. Their eyes see the muzzle flashes of a tank. That cognitive lag, the split second between processing the audio lie and the visual truth, is where the battle is won. The target is erased before they realize the engagement has begun. This is the wolf in sheep's clothing. We didn't just weaponize the gun, we weaponized the expectation. And now that deception hands off the package to the final variable, the billion dollar taxi ride. Zero to 30 hours. The prisoner is secured. Flex cuffs, black hood. Two operators maintaining physical control. The extraction vehicle, Boeing MH-47G Chinook. Why this specific airframe? One word redundancy. Twin tandem rotors, twin Honeywell turboshaft engines, dual hydraulic loops. If one engine fails, the other compensates. If a hydraulic line is severed, the backup maintains authority. This machine was designed to absorb punishment and continue the mission. The flight profile is nap of the earth, 50 feet above the water. So low the rotor wash kicks up spray. But in total darkness, with no horizon line, how do you fly 50 feet above moving waves without crashing? You don't trust your eyes, you trust the math. The pilots rely on the ANAPQ-186 terrain following radar. It scans the ocean surface 30 times a second, feeding data directly into the flight computer to maintain that exact 50-foot gap. Human reflexes are too slow. The algorithm keeps them alive. At this altitude, physics becomes our ally. Ground-based radar cannot distinguish the helicopter from the ocean surface. The radar waves bounce off the waves, creating sea clutter. The helicopter hides inside this electronic noise. It becomes invisible. The destination, USS Iwo Jima, LHD-7. Not a destroyer, not a transport. A 40,000-ton sea base positioned exactly 80 miles offshore. It is a floating sovereign territory, all positioned exactly beyond the effective mathematical range of ground-based retaliation. Supporting this single 30-minute flight is a logistical architecture that rivals a small nation's economy. High above, the E-2D Advanced Hawkeye acts as the conductor of this symphony. It is not just a radar plane, it is a flying data center. Its AN APY-9 radar defeats the curvature of the Earth. It fuses data from the stealthy F-22s and the low-flying helicopters, creating a single God's-eye view of the battle space. Without the Hawkeye, the orchestra is deaf. And waiting below is the USS Herschel Woody Williams, serving as a mobile lily pad, a forward refueling point ensuring the special operations helicopters never run dry without needing to return to the carrier. This was not improvisation. This was a symphony of gears, fuel, and physics executed in darkness. 0417 hours. The Chinook flares over the stern. Wheels touch steel. The prisoner is transferred to Marine guards. The helicopter lifts off immediately. Total time on deck, 93 seconds. The math checks out. 0430 hours. Operation Absolute Resolve concludes. Total elapsed time, three hours, 48 minutes. Zero American casualties. Zero aircraft lost. The high value target is secured. Mission success. But success did not come from luck. 
it came from systemic overmatch. The F-22 owned the physics of the sky, creating an invisible ceiling of denial. The B-1B owned the physics of kinetic energy, providing supersonic mass to erase obstacles. The MH-60M owned the physics of sound, weaponizing acoustics to cloak the extraction. When 150 machines operate in perfect synchronization, they cease to be individual platforms. They become an invincible equation. This operation proved a fundamental principle. When American engineering meets tactical necessity, distance becomes irrelevant. The densest air defense network becomes a minor variable in the calculation. Consider this. Before a single engine started tonight, this mission had already been flown 5,000 times inside the Joint Simulation Environment, JSE. We fed the enemy's radar data into our servers. We ran every variable, every weather pattern, every failure scenario. We knew the outcome before the wheels left the runway. Tonight was not a gamble. It was just the final render. We demonstrated that sovereignty is a function of capability, not geography. Political borders are lines on a map. But to an F-22 at 50,000 feet, or a satellite in low Earth orbit, those lines do not exist. We didn't just win a battle in the dark, we proved that we can bend the reality of the battlefield to our will through overwhelming mathematics. This was not about heroism, this was about architecture. The supply chain is the kill chain. The world sees a victory. Navy Decoded sees the blueprint. We don't just watch the machine, we analyze the math that makes it run. The system is the weapon, the math has been run. The variables have been calculated. The equation is solved.